and welcome to another week in our garden. The weather's turning now, we've had some more rain and wind and several frosts in the morning but that's this time of year, we'll live with that. Now I'll just show you the progress of the seedlings in the propagator and some seed we're going to set this week. I won't set it with you because we're a bit time limited today. So we'll show you what I'm going to set and where I'm going to set it. And then next week we'll perhaps add something more to put it. Now the tomatoes are doing very well. These are those honeybee that's very very old seed as you can see. It must be nearly 100% germination. These are the Crimson Crush doing rather well and these are the gardener's delight just give them a twiddle to save them they're, they're doing rather well as well I don't know if you can see that but the globe onion the red baron has started to germinate there's no sign of the santerio or the stir on yet but I'm sure there won't be long now I'll just show you what seeds I'm going to be putting in during the week. Right, so these are peas, meteor, very, very early peas and quite hardy, so I'm going to have a try and putting some of those in. I don't know where to direct set them yet, but I'll probably put a few in pots and then put them out. The Brussels sprouts, it's time to put those out. Now, the peas, the Brussels sprouts, the leeks, the cauliflower and the cabbage will all be set in the bottom greenhouse. I won't put those in the heated propagator. So if we go through it, you've got the summer cauliflower. Won't put a lot in, maybe a dozen and we have plenty. The leeks. Now this will be the first set of leeks, so I shall set them now and get them so we can use them and then follow up with a second set that will take us into winter. The cabbage is the mini coal, beautiful little cabbage. They'll always do well. Again, maybe a dozen will keep us going for a bit. The lettuce will obviously be put into the propagator because you need a bit of bottom warmth to get those up and those will hopefully be grown in the bottom greenhouse in troughs. Tomato, this is San Maranzo, this is the plum, what we use for cooking. Need to get those into the heat now and get them going. Onion, white Lisbon I was going to set them in, but now I'm going to set them in the cold. They'll be better off down in the greenhouse than what they will here. And these are your tomato money maker that grow outside. So we'll put those in now. Then when all weather's past us and we're getting into summer, they can go out. The plum tomatoes will also go outside as well. We always grow those outside. Never let us know. Now we'll go down the bottom greenhouse. On the way, we'll check the soil temperature so we know how we're doing temperature-wise. It won't be very warm just yet, but we'll check anyway. And I'll take you in the greenhouse, show you the progress, and we'll probably do a little bit of the potting of the overwintered geraniums, etc. Right, I'm just going to pop the thermometer in and have a look what the temperature of the soil is. I'll do it at where the roots are rather than the top and it says the air temperature is 11 at the moment so let's see what the soil is. We'll just give it a minute or two to settle down and take the temperature and then we'll try one a bit lower down as well because obviously we're on a bit of a slope here. As you can see the 
Soil temperature in the root zone is at five degrees Celsius. Not a lot of growing there. Right, now I'll take a second reading where the garlic is just to see how they're coping and what temperature they're growing at. At the moment it's registering eight, nine. So we'll put it in, see how we're doing. Now we'll just give it a few minutes to settle down. So the temperature in the root zone of the garlic is five degrees Celsius. My goodness, they're doing well to say they're that low. Now we've come into the bottom greenhouse. We'll just show you the progress of the potatoes. And as you can see, they're a bit congested in here because this year I've got two greenhouses in one. So I've set it up for the growing on of the plants we'll use for summer bedding and the seedlings that were growing and then once we start getting through the season we'll change it then to tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers as you can see they're popping up nicely now now they've come down to the bottom it's a little bit warmer in here than it was in the shed so they really will put some growth on as soon as they get to the top of those bags We'll top it up with compost. That's the third one that's in the corner. Perhaps it's a little bit cooler at that end because they're not showing too well, but they'll be fine. Now I've put two Dutch trolleys here with a lower shelf and high shelf. There should be enough room in there for the plants to grow, but if not, then we'll keep turning them up and down until they're, they're growing. Right. In here, are those broad beans we set. I know we only set 13 pots but there were still 12 seeds so I put them in these just to see whether any come up. They are just beginning to pop through now. Now if we do get too many broad beans I do know somebody will take them off me. I use uh, I use these trays they're the same trays of what the propagators have, but there's no electricity in these, no heaters or anything. And these are the old propagator lids that we had up there, but we bought new ones. So I've put these on here and we've put the new ones on the propagator. I don't know if you noticed, but the difference is these are red. This M1, those seeds that we're going to grow down here will be in these trays and so what I've done I've popped that in it is quite warm in here believe it or not and so the compost will warm up a little it came from in the sheds and it was very very cold to compost so I do need to let it warm up a bit now the brassicas etc will go in there now although when we were coming down the garden the temperature out there, I believe, was seven in the air with that thermometer, so it wasn't very accurate. But in the greenhouse, no heat or anything, and it's 13 degrees in here. We just need the sun just to pop out a little bit, and it warms up and warms the walls, and then radiates the heat back out. Now, let's have a look at these overwintered plants. As you can see, I've started potting a few up, but it's getting to the time when I really do need to put the time in and get them done. Now, I wanted to show you this. Can you see this one? It's got very leggy and not very good at all. Last time we had one like that that got very leggy and scruffy, if you like. I took the cuttings off them and pop them in this pot and they've all rooted in the cold winter as well so very pleased. I'll get those repotted next time we come down. Now do you remember we overwintered all these? You can see I've used the best plant pots you can get. <laughs> the old paint pots, very useful because of their size. All I'll do is cut them off, make some holes in put a piece of polythene in the bottom and then put the plants in. 
Now I'll empty it out and you'll see what the soil's like, what they've overwintered in. You know, they, they seem quite happy in it. We've actually got some with flowers on as well, a lot with flowers on. But well, I'll tip it out and you'll see how dry this compost is. Just tip them out, nothing, nothing special to come out. made a mess on the floor in there. There's the classic pot. It's got some holes in with a piece of polythene in the bottom. That's how they overwinter. Now as you can see it's a wee bit on the dry side but that's how they overwinter. And they, they have got weeds they've got no vine weevil in there at all i haven't seen any yet and all right they want tidying up but look at the roots that's overwintered root that's no problem at all we just take these leaves off i need a pot really don't i i'll do it from this side there's a little bit more room we're very tight on the room in here, but we'll be fine. We just take these leaves off that have died a little bit. I have got the secateurs there if we do any serious pruning. But, and this flower's out, so we'll take that off anyway. But there's another flower coming there. I won't take that off because it's, it's perfectly all right at that. Now these will go in these, these are two litre, two litre pots. I've cleaned them best I can, but they are on about the third or fourth time maybe through the system, so. The compost is potting compost mixed with some of our own garden compost, which is decaying down absolutely beautiful. I've tried to keep the compost in here for a day or two to warm it up but it still feels a bit cold but I'm sure it'll be alright. Now as you see that the roots are actually coming from here so if you're short of plants you could actually cut those off with the roots and put them in a separate pot and let them root but we want nice big plants ready for the summer so we'll keep all that together. We put it in, I have to go a bit deeper than that I'm afraid, there you go, there it is. Now what to find, when I'm repotting up, I don't push the compost down too hard, keep it a bit on the lighter side and I'll have to cover those roots up a little bit like that. Look. There you go, a bit of a cloth, we just wipe the pot round and then that goes, let me move that, that goes up there. Now I don't water over the top when I first pot them up because this compost is actually very wet. So I shall wait if the weather picks up and it gets very very warm. I'll just put some water in these big trays and let it go up on their own rather than pouring water on everything. The other thing I do at night is I put the fleece, this lot is all fleeced up at night so I actually put a fleece over there as well and this side. There's a, there's a lot of fleecing to do at night but that's just to get them through the night. I think the night temperature last night was 2.1 degrees in here and there was a, a frost. The car was white over this morning, so there was a good frost. But 2.1, that just shows a little bit of glass 
actually protects from these frosts. Let's do another one for you. That one's a bit small, let's pick a big one. There you are. Don't we? Now you can see we have to do a bit of cutting here. We need to cut that and that off. The rest is fine. Take the leaves off that are looking a bit offish. Because a leaf like that will eventually die out anyway. And as regards the flowers, there's two. I'm going to leave them. And we'll just take that off and that if I can there it is put those in there a little bit of compost in the bottom again it wants to be quite deep again not so perhaps a bit more than that there you go and just top it up lightly now if you wished later on when they settle down and start growing you could actually take these for cuttings but if you take too many cuttings remember your the plant is getting smaller and smaller now some of them like this red one here is huge so you could take a few cuttings off that now and it will still be a big plant later on when you put it in the pots for summer that is quite a big plant that's all that plant there now i told you how i watered them this is very wet so i'm not going to wet it now but if i have to later on when they start growing if you have to give them a little bit of feed i will there is feed in this compost but a little bit more won't hurt it when they start growing seriously so a bit of a wipe That's it, and up you go. We'll do this one not, as well. But they're all, all much of a muchness. Look, you can see how they're growing away beautifully. But I shall have to cover those up with that compost while we, and I'll just take the dead leaves off. It's been at the back, and when I emptied the pot, put compost all over the poor thing. Ooh. We'll sort it. Now there's no real, there's nothing really on that to take off. I think we ought to reduce the flowers to one, but they're both coming out, so we'll leave them as it is. As you see, it's nice and clean, no weevil trouble. If it was weevilled, when you lift it up, you won't have this root ball at the bottom. All the bottom of the root will be eaten away and you'll know you've got a problem. Alright, so same again. There you are. Huh? Sits in there nicely. And the same, not too tight compost, leave it loose so it can root into it. It'll be away in no time. That's nice. Clean the pot and my hands. Now this is wobbling about a little bit, so I just need to. That's better. And then up you go. You can imagine when all this is full of those and all this is full with the plants from the shed out the propagator we're going to be very busy i'll just show you some of them when i put them into these pots for overwintering if there was a bit too big i took a cutting off them and just put it in a cell tray in some of this sandy compost and they've rooted so we've got quite a few plants now that are going to grow on. I put these in this little propagator here 
and as soon as they grow out of it they can come out onto the trays with the others. The fuchsias will all be done the same now. If you really wanted cuttings off fuchsias, now's the time to get them. The ivy leaf, pelagoniums or geraniums, they're all the same. This here is a gypsophilia, baby's breath, that we keep in the greenhouse because it's good for the flower arranging. These are all the Regal Pelagoniums. That was just pushed in a pot because I was running out of big pots. But that will be treated exactly the same. Clean it off, pot it up, and it's as light as a feather. There's an example of those geraniums that we took while I was potting them up. One's failed a little bit. You can see I was going to count one, two, three, four, five. There's six geraniums in there ready for potting up. I'll have to get on with it. I've got such a lot to do, I have to put some long shifts in. All these trays, these are gravel trays. Uh, these are ready for all those plants up there or anything to, we have to keep moving things to give them more light. They'll go in these and it would be easier to lift that off than might will one pot at a time. And I can, one or two of these are getting a bit old and they leak a bit, but I can actually water into these as well. I haven't really got anything else in here to show you, except for how busy I'm going to be. So that will be it for this week. We look forward to seeing you next week. Oh, I did finish that bit of digging that I showed you where the straw was on top. So as we stand, all the digging's been done. We just need to get the plants ready now and put them in. Take care, everyone. Keep warm in this cold weather. And we'll see you next week. Bye now.